The number six refers to earthly matters. It's aligned with materialism, finances, and earthly worries. This is why from the Christian perspective, God created man and beasts on the sixth day, and men were appointed six days to labor. Because of its ties to earthly matters, Christians often call six the number of sin. And in Hebrew numerology, six was often considered an evil number. That's a stretch though. No number is inherently evil, but overemphasizing the vibrations of six results in an imbalance. Six is the number of man handling and mastering the world, and this is why it visually looks like an eye, a man standing on top of the world. Everything is related in this matrix, as above, so below, and numbers are no exception. On the contrary, nine is humanitarian, showing the opposite, the eye, the man holding up the world like Atlas. Nine has also been associated with death, and in this vein, ego death, which is what's required if we are to tear down this control system and replace it with a new paradigm based in love. The number eight represents the infinite, hence why the number is also an infinity sign. The infinity sign symbolizes that which is not restrained by space and time. Love is infinite. Love does not exclude. It is the only infinite vibration and therefore will forever remain, no matter what happens throughout the multiverse. Therefore, eight represents infinite love. Six, again, is the material. When you see recurring sixes given to you on clocks, license plates, and other mediums, it's a reminder to set your intentions upon more spiritual sites instead of worrying about material needs. The more sixes you see, the more you are being guided to go inward and look for spiritual direction. So if six represents earthly matters and eight represents the infinite, then seven would be right in the middle, signifying that source created both and we have free will to use this for harmonious or destructive purposes. Seven is the neutrality of our power. When celebrities and politicians are constantly flashing the 666 hand gesture, this represents their admiration of the principles that the number six represents, the mastering of earthly matters, which is currently out of balance. It's been overemphasized, and therefore 666 represents an attempt at cutting the connection to infinite love, as to indulge in solely earthly pursuits, like power and sex. The Greek root hex means six and is similar to the Latin cognate sex. The word sex is phonetically similar to the word six, and this is no accident. In standard numerology, we get the phrase X's and O's from six, and this is also why triple X's are used in association with sex. XXX means 666. The word sex is derived from the Latin sacare, meaning to cut off. Sacare also means to intersect, meaning to lie across each other. This reveals the dual nature of sex. It can be used to divide or to unify. And like the number six, sex when overemphasized and inverted becomes a force for restriction rather than expansion. Sigmund Freud is considered one of the fathers of psychology. His work is taught in all college-level psychology classes, and his theories are generally considered reasonable. He used sex in almost every one of his explanations for human behavior. Freud believed that much of the mind's discord and tension was due to the buildup of sexual energy, displayed in his psychosexual theory of development. According to his theory, each stage of psychosexual development must be met successfully for proper development. The famous sexologist Alfred Kinsey was influenced by Freud, and throughout his career, he gave support to pornography and pedophilia, some even suggesting he was a pedophile himself. Even the New York Times has questioned if he was a sexual liberator or a sexual pervert. There's three elements of creation within sex, procreation, pleasure, and psychogenesis. Most of society at large focuses on procreation and especially pleasure. Much like the masses, thinkers like Freud and Kinsey reduced sexuality to pleasure, even inciting it in their psychological explanations. The third element, psychogenesis, the creation of a spiritual nature through sex, has been actively suppressed and misunderstood. The human sex drive is the strongest energy source of the body. 
This energy is the inner life force we carry within. Our creativity, discipline, and vitality are all based on this sexual energy. It is the greatest source of our magic. The author M in the Day Spring of Youth sums this up perfectly. The controlling of the sex nature builds up a reservoir of strength, and it is this strength that opens the door to the innermost. An orgasm cannot be simplified as just a pleasurable feeling. An orgasm is a climactic peak of sexual electrical forces in which the nervous system is overcharged with sexual energy, resulting in a short circuit, a damaging release of energy. This comes out in the form of semen for males and typically does not entail expulsion of fluids for females. Orgasms are primarily energetic, so it's not always accompanied by the expulsion of sexual fluids, but it usually is in men. People who repeat the orgasm gradually lose the ability to have it. They become impotent or become indifferent to sex because their energetic centers become burned out. This is why Viagra and related medications are so common these days, and it's why pornography and sex toys have become so popular. It's all artificial stimulation for sexual energy. This is also why people move towards more and more extreme sexual interests and fetishes because the areas that stimulated them previously become burned out. It's a vicious cycle that much of humanity has been enveloped in, focusing too much on the vibrations of six and not allowing the re-emergence of sacred sexuality, which deals with the earthly six and the infinite eight. Sacred sexuality is a return to the true function of the body, one in which this short circuit of orgasm is no longer inflicting harm. Instead, these forces are retained and redirected, vitalizing the entire body and spirit. Many spiritual and religious dogmas promote the idea that sexuality is bad or evil, promoting repression of sexuality. Notably, Catholicism and the Islamic faith hold sexual energy as shameful, evil, and dangerous. We are sexually repressed, but not in the way most psychologists and sex workers would have us believe. While the masses are enticed into and engaged in what they call sexual freedom, it's actually sexual slavery. Sexual repression does not mean the solution is to have sex for pure enjoyment. The true solution is to channel that sexual energy into more creative ways. This, of course, requires self-discipline, but not for the sake of self-instilled misery, but self-discipline for the sake of setting oneself free. Sigmund Freud once said, I advocate an incomparably freer sexual life. If only Americans knew, we are bringing them the plague. He's revealing to us this belief of sexual freedom or sexual liberation is quite literally the opposite. Most of us are exposed to warped opinions and images regarding sexuality from a young age. As boys and girls enter puberty, their sexual energy awakens within them, but this energy is usually never fully explored because they've already been indoctrinated into a toxic worldview. Unbalanced attitudes towards sex are marketed to us via advertising and so-called entertainment. It's practically inescapable in modern society to not be bombarded with this inverted sexual seduction in some form on a daily basis. When we see all of these sexualized bodies in the media, I'm not saying they should be covered up like many religions promote. The body is a beautiful thing. By covering us up with clothes, specifically the breasts and genital areas, we're subconsciously agreeing that these areas are coveted and naughty objects rather than natural, whole and complete parts of the human body. Freud's psychosexual theory paints the breasts and genitals as purely relating to sexuality. This is a perversion of the beautiful bodies we have. The genitalia and breasts are instrumental in creation, pleasure and sustenance of human life, but they're not solely sex objects. Modern clothes are designed to synonymously hide and draw attention to these areas. It subconsciously makes us feel sexually repressed while sexually energized. It's a form of the Hegelian dialectic. And excessively covering up our bodies because they're seen as evil or corruptible lends to the idea that bodies are purely sexual and because of that must remain unseen. The body is much more than sexual. Again, the genitalia and breasts are not only pleasure centers, but areas of elimination, rejuvenation, and spirituality. We don't have to cover ourselves up, 
and we also don't have to draw excessive attention to these areas. I'm not saying don't wear baggy clothes, and I'm not saying don't wear revealing bikinis. I'm just saying we should be able to wear clothes without ideologies involving sex. I've explored in previous videos how we're living in a matrix, more specifically an energy extraction matrix. Sexual energy is one of the main ways this matrix is being upheld. Our own sexual energy is used by the elite to enslave us. They set up a control grid with images of inverted sexuality surrounding us, allowing entities to feed off of that energy. It's a black magic agreement. In turn, these negative entities aid in reinforcing this control, fear-based reality, using our sexual energy against us. Along with fear and suffering, our sexual energy is harnessed like batteries. The Matrix is a computer-generated dream world, built to keep us under control in order to change a human being into this. The organized sexual abuse of our children by the elite is harnessing the untapped sexual energy from our children. Because children are fragile, this energy combined with the fear and suffering they experience during the act is more powerful than the sexual abuse of adults. And this is why pedophilia is instrumental in powering this energy extraction matrix. Many of you are most familiar with Pizzagate, but there's been whistleblower after whistleblower exposing child exploitation rings for years. It takes an extreme amount of fear-based energy to maintain a dark, fictitious reality within the confines of this hologram, because fear is not infinite like love is. Referring back to the beginning, infinity is eight and can only be love. The emphasis on earthly matters like sex, which when imbalanced turns into fear and a scarcity-based consciousness, is a six and it's half of the power of love. This is why love is the only way to tear down this false matrix we're living in. It yields much more vibrational power than fear ever will. Love does not have to be harnessed for it to wield its power. It already trumps all fear that it comes into contact with. Another reason inverted sexuality is all around us is because the elite need us distracted. People who spend their time in search of sexual stimulation tend to ignore the more spiritual aspects of life. Most importantly, the endless search for sexual stimulation directs us away from the true work that must be done right now, which is being a vessel for truth so we may change this reality from a control-based system to a heart-based system. Lust is an insatiable force that energetically consumes its practitioner giving way to a dullness of the spirit, the opposite of what is needed right now on this plane. The illusions of money and power are all related to the abuse of sexual energy. As a man, I can assure you that many men want to become musicians, celebrities, and politicians because of the allure of status, meaning more opportunities to have sex, and not sacred union, but promiscuous, uncontrolled sex. Domination, most often by males, has become a constant in sexual attitudes. The imbalance of the feminine masculine traits with an overemphasis on masculine left brain principles in our society extends in our attitudes towards sexuality. 